Keurigs are stupid. Hot take. Burrito bowls, supremely overrated. But more on that later. We gonna <laughs> stop recording or? <laughs> hey guys, this will be our first news review for this year. And sadly, it's a little heavier than either of us would like. Um, first thing to acknowledge is Hurricane Florence. We're here in Virginia, so we're pretty close to the theoretical hit zone, although at time of filming, it hasn't uh, happened to us yet. Um, but at this point, there have been about five deaths. Um, so sorry to all y'all in North and South Carolina. Um, I hope you're doing well, and hopefully it passes soon. Um, here at Tech, uh, I think I've been, I've mentioned this, that I've been busy, but I haven't really put much thought to it. I've just been trying to make it through this week. Um, but Tyler, how, how have you felt about people here and how they're reacting? So I've seen kind of the whole spectrum. Um, there have been a lot of people that are like, eh, this will pass. Um, but also as an RA especially, uh, within Housing and Residence Life, we've really been like prep for the worst. Oh, um, yeah, I guess that's true. We're gonna, we have like plans in place for extra duties people might have to pick up to help uh, if there's, if we're hit, seriously hit by storms, but also just extra duties with going and talking to residents who have family affected or are affected elsewhere. Because you know, even though now with the current path, we're not supposed to be getting a lot, um, mm -hmm. we're not that far from home for a lot of people. Like, the, yeah. the storm itself has been that far from home for a lot of people here. Yeah, I've definitely been more in the, eh, it'll pass kind mm. of mood when I think about it. But that might be more optimistic than anything. Right. Um, also, the path has changed significantly. It didn't look like we were going to get a lot more. I know a lot of people were very frustrated that we didn't get any school closings, at least as of time of recording. Um, I <laughs> saw a lot of memes that were like, yeah, I'd rather see the entire school get demolished than have to sit through one 50-minute class. <laughs> which is sad quite a way of looking at things, but yeah. we've all been there. This next segment, I'll let you introduce this next news part because I know it's close to your heart. Um, yeah. All right, yeah, so to be fully transparent, um, actually, this episode's coming out a week later because of this uh, next segment. Um, we were going to record a week earlier than we are, um, but that night, or that afternoon, uh, we got the news of Mac Miller's passing. Uh, Mac Miller was 26 years old. Uh, he was a F Pittsburgh rapper who, although he was only 26, he had been one of the most influential people in the hip-hop scene since about 2010. Um, so about eight years um, at that point. He was super influential on me as a person, just uh, when I first really got into music that first summer, he was kind of having a big change. Uh, he put out his mixtape, Macadelic, and that was like all I listened to that summer. Uh, me and my best friends have so many memories to just playing that mixtape for an entire summer. Um, he also just really showed me how to live as a white person in hip hop. Um, he didn't try to really like take it and make it his, but he also wasn't like corny and overly apologetic. He just kind of was real and like, appreciated People things but not that, yeah. yeah he wasn't doing fan service he wasn't Mac Macklemore dropping like a song about his white privilege but he also would never shy away from it um, yeah well I guess for me as someone in music I've always heard his name mentioned but uh, I don't personally know too much about him and you made kind of a bold statement that you know one of the most influential rappers over the past eight years and w what do you think uh, made him such um, for someone who's more not like uncultured in hip hop but less cultured. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple different kind of main points to that. Uh, with his initial uh, breakthrough, he was very much like a happy go lucky kind of endearing high school type rapper, mm -hmm. um, which led to a whole wave of those immediately after. Um, he was fully independent until 2015. He had the first uh, hip-hop album to debut at number one on the charts, independent since the mid-90s, um, and really was just a huge uh, influence on just inf uh, independent music. Um, also, he 
all, despite being so young, always kept his ears to the ground with younger artists. Um, he took Chance the Rapper on his first tour. He took Kendrick Lamar on his first tour. He had a house in Los Angeles for a long time where so many albums were recorded for free. Like he, he's largely responsible for the rise of like Top Dog Entertainment, uh, keeping Odd Future on with everything. Like the the LA underground scene for a long time owed a lot to Mac Miller. Um, at any given time, anyone from Future to CeeLo Green would be there, and he would. He took a approach of not just like working in the way that a lot of rappers will, where like we're collaborating through email, but really, let's sit for six hours and think about this bridge. Um, yeah. He produced a full album for Vince Staples before anyone who knew who Vince Staples was, um, and it was it was always about the music, never about like the status of an artist. Mm. Um, he also has kind of the widest reach of any rapper I've seen. Like, he's the only person I would see work with Chief Keef and then turn around and work with um, Bun B and then turn around and work with Little Dragon. Like, this man was everywhere and working with everyone and bridging a lot of gaps. Thanks for that. I think you did a good job of explaining to me. Mm -hmm. This week in recommendations, my recommendation is that you should listen to Polka Dots and Moonbeams. Moon, Moonbeams, by Bill Evans. It is one of the sweetest songs I've ever heard, and I greatly enjoy it. Tyler? Well, what's so sweet about it? Well, if you listen to Bill Evans play a piano, it's very gentle, mm -hmm. but I would say graceful. And all, graceful on the point of being witty. Um, and I think it's, it does a really good job of, I think oftentimes I want, when I listen to music now, because life is pretty busy, that I want it to be something calming, mm -hmm. but not necessarily cheesy. Um, and it's very hard to find that, like, that balance um, between, I'm listening to this music and it is complex, but it's also not avant-garde. Gotcha. Um, and I think... It's just the standard piano jazz. I love it. Um, especially that song. It just seems so... It, I love it when jazz is written. I think often jazz is more, you know, played um, versus being something that you could, like, feels composed and there, there are parts too. So this song is very sweet and gentle in a loving way. And who is Bill Evans? Uh, Bill Evans is a piano player, most notably, um, he's on the uh, Miles Davis's Kind of Blue album, which is, in my opinion, the best American album ever made. Dad, if you're watching, I know you are incredibly proud and totally agree. Yeah. Um, I would say that's a hot take, but it's Miles Davis. Um, yeah, so he played a lot on that record, and that's where you see he if you hear him comping in like blue and green or something, he's just so minimal, but it's just enough. Somehow he's he's perfect every time. So he is dead now, if you're wondering. Rip. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll get into mine too. Uh, mine, unfortunately, is also from a uh, deceased artist. Mine is a much more recent passing though. Uh, this will kind of tie into what I was just talking about in the news update, uh, but it's Mac Miller's U EP, which was actually released under the name Larry Lovenstein and the Velvet Revival. Um, it's Mac has a lot of really obvious high points in his career that a lot of people would recommend quickly as like his best projects, so I decided to go more for one that's easily forgotten. Um, U was a very jazzy side project that he fully produced and uh, just sang on. Um, most or several of the tracks are completely instrumental, um, but it's really just kind of a little love album or EP. Um, I think it's about 15 minutes long, so definitely an easy thing to fit into your daily schedule. So let's get back to those hot takes from earlier. Keurig's trash? Yes, okay. Stay with me, stay with me. Higher upfront cost. I got a coffee maker at Goodwill this week for $2. Regular Keurig, probably at least 40 I don't know. Um, higher variable cost, it costs more to get those pods per cup than it does just to like 
brew coffee. Third, the coffee is worse. Like, it's just not as good. It's, it's weak. And you can't even customize your coffee. Four, like, all the waste. Like, you, you're just throwing those little pods, like, everywhere. Like, imagine... And fifth, you can't, like, if you have, like, 12 people over for pancakes on a Saturday, for instance, you can't, like, do you want just all your curing pods to be, like, gone by the end of the day? No. You can just make one pot of coffee, and everyone can enjoy that. So... Curates are stupid. Yeah, so I kind of went into this with the intention of disagreeing with you, just for sport, but I cannot think of a single redeeming <laughs> argument for the Keurig. Keurig's If you stupid. have one, what, are you, what you doing? I, it's one thing if you got one as a gift or something, and you got one of those little reusable pods. Yeah. Well, I guess it's convenient. That's the yeah. one. Like, it's quick. It is quick. But, like, coffee only takes a couple minutes. Yeah. Like, I think that's a big thing. Why are like, you lazy? They're so convenient, but it takes you... If you prep it the night before, you can program a lot of coffee machines, so they're just ready for you the night. Or take a minute to set it up, hit the button, wait two minutes. That's and like go walk, you can go do stuff. Brush your while teeth, the coffee go burns. to the bathroom. It'll take five minutes for the whole process, versus a minute and a half for the whole process. Like, <laughs> three <laughs> three minutes. It just it's not yeah. worth it. <laughs> I stand by this, Josh. Okay. All right. Hot take. Uh, burrito <laughs> bowls are <laughs> still really overrated. See, I, okay, you, this one hurt me a little, because I like burritos, and in, in the redeeming quality of a burrito bowl is the frugality of the burrito bowl, because a burrito, you're, like, forced to eat in one sitting, like, where it's, like, recommended. It's right. just not, you know, there's not, You're like, not going to take home and reheat a burrito. Yeah, yeah, there's resealable lid, and you can do what my friend Chris does, shout out Chris, is that you order the burrito bowl, then you order a burrito, like, tortilla with it you make a smaller but still full burrito while at chipotle and then save the burrito bowl for later two meals from one hot take i would much rather have a burrito <laughs> any day reason one i like the one the mat the the beauty of just getting well, through see, I, I like eating me, a whole burrito too there's nothing like it you feel powerful you can't set it down. you literally cannot set it down <laughs> no. so it's it's an, it's an experience beyond just eating um, <laughs> beyond just eating also i would argue it is a little less food than getting a bowl but it's better food because every bite is better like i don't know i feel like the, they're way better mixed. Even if you stir yours around with a fork, it's not going to be as perfect as they somehow stack things uh, when they actually make your burrito. Um, also, I like it being one meal instead of two because things always get so soggy and weird and it, they just never reheat as well as they do the first time. So I would rather get one full great experience. It's almost primal just getting through this giant baby-sized uh, <laughs> food vessel. But... That's just me. Uh, I had my first burrito bowl ever a couple weeks ago, and that's what inspired this. Um, fun little pro tip, though. Cadoba nachos, chips on the side. It's all the beauty of a burrito bowl, but there's no like, there's nothing that gets gross when you reheat it, and you get a huge serving of chips. So you get like two full meals out of that. Wow. Pro tip. <laughs> See, now I kind of want a burrito. Now, what would this show be without a corny joke to make you cringe or maybe laugh, I don't know who you are. What would it be? So, Robert, you hear about the uh, the new restaurant on the moon? No, I haven't heard about the new restaurant on the moon, Tyler. Uh, well, it's got wonderful food. Like, it's some of the best I've ever had. Uh, but no atmosphere. I'm just, I'm connecting with them. On probably a spiritual level at this point. Thanks for watching, guys. We appreciate you.